I want to introduce you now to Reagan Jackson. She's an author and activist from South Seattle whose collection of essays touch on issues like feminism, reproductive rights, and education. At its core, still true, the evolution of an unexpected journalist is about trying to find belonging in a world that is ever-changing. Reagan, welcome to New Day. Thank you. Uh, there's a lot to dive into, so I'm going to jump right in. I, I have to say, I love the concept of unexpected journalist. Mm -hmm. How does that describe you? Well, for me, I just didn't really see a place for myself in journalism. When I was looking at it, I it felt a little dry. It, it didn't feel like it was capturing the true stories of, yeah. of my community. Um, yeah, so I just thought, oh, maybe not. Maybe it's not for me. Mm -hmm. But then I, I had the great fortune of meeting the co-founders of the Seattle Globalist, uh, Sarah Studeville, Jessica mm -hmm. Partnow, and Alex Stonehill, and that's where my journey began. And they said, hey, you are a journalist. There you go. <laughs> yeah. How did you start writing? Oh, I've been writing since I was eight. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I uh, it's just something I always love to mm -hmm. do, and I had a really encouraging teacher who saw that as we were trying to learn how to read that the books were really boring, and so she threw out all the books and said, okay, we're gonna write our own books. And so I came home and I was like, mom, I'm gonna be an author. I love that. And it just kind of took off from there. So I'm that person who I carry a notebook in my purse, like I have, usually have a pen on me. Right, like, in your ear? Yeah, me oh, too. totally. I'm like, <laughs> I took it out so, you know, to be well, on the show, but I thought. I, that is, I, what a great story. It really does take one teacher and one person. Sometimes it is one voice, like your voice, that can awaken people and, and, and enliven, enliven people, I should say. Still True is a collection of articles that you've written about life in Rainier Beach and beyond. How did you decide what to include in the book and kind of give us an idea of what we can find in here? Ooh, okay, I, I broke it down into what are the things that I, I'm most passionate about and mm -hmm. what are the things that I tend to write about. Yeah. So to that end, like there's, uh, the headings are the world, the people, the hood, <laughs> the struggle. Yeah. Uh, and then I kind of looked at my articles that were, were in each category and chose the best of those. Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been covering the push against gentrification for a long time now, for many years, especially in Rainier Beach. Mm -hmm. How has your neighborhood changed and wh why does it need protection? Mm. I don't know that I'd use the word protection. I want to use the word autonomy. Okay. Um, I want the people living in Rainier Beach to have a, a choice mm -hmm. in, in where they live and why. Um, so backing up, I, I've lived in Rainier Beach for about 13 years yeah. now. I bought a house at the bottom of the bubble. And what I realized is like all of us have our story of home, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. where do you live and why? And for many of us people of color living in this country, where we live and why has been uh, obstructed by, by systemic oppression. Right. So I'm talking about redlining. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about banks saying, we're gonna literally draw a line on a map and this is where people of color can live. Yeah. I'm talking about, even if we wanna go further back, uh, indigenous people getting pushed uh, onto reservations, mm -hmm. um, never having control or autonomy over where they live. Yeah. So for me, yeah, I've seen, I've seen my neighborhood change a lot and change is inevitable, right? right. Change is not necessarily a negative mm -hmm. thing, but when the changes occur because uh, people can't afford to live there anymore, yeah that's when it becomes a problem. That's when it becomes gentrification. And it's shifted an entire community to another place, which is, it's, it's really unbelievable. You also wrote about the impact of gun violence uh, mm -hmm. in Rainier Beach. Mm -hmm. You've had bullets come through your own window. How do you balance safety needs and the desire to fight for the neighborhood? Because I know that's also a big issue that we can't even barely touch on right now, but just let's try to get into it. Well, I want to give a little context about that, though, because I do feel like the Rainier Beach in the, the 90s, for example, was yeah. a time where there was a lot of uh, gang violence and gun violence and, and that it wasn't necessarily a safe place to be, but right. the Rainier Beach of today is actually very different. And mm -hmm. a lot of that is in part to organizations like RBAC, the Rainier Beach Ach Action Coalition, right. uh, who's really put a lot of time and energy into making Rainier Beach a beautiful and safe place to live. So yes, I did have, I have had in 12 years, one experience of, of gun violence that deeply impacted mm -hmm. me. Uh, but in, in the context of, of where I live, I don't feel less safe mm -hmm. in Rainier Beach than I do in Wallingford, for example. Right. Well, and I will say, even mm -hmm. though that 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 question was here on the card, I think mm -hmm. I would I would challenge people to 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 take a look around mm -hmm. their neighborhoods as well, because it isn't just I think where we think it is. I mean, it's really mm -hmm. a, a vast swath of of society now. 
Where do you see Rainier Beach in 10 years, and where would you like to see it? Mm. Oh, I love this question. I love any future-facing question. I feel like I'm yeah. a futurist in that way. But that being said, I'm not entirely sure. I think it's going to depend on today yeah. and on the choices that we make as a community and mm -hmm. how we want to work together. And uh, the beautiful thing is I see so many wonderful people who do live in Rainier Beach who are, who are working with that kind of intentionality and thinking through, uh, oh, hey, we want this farm here. We're going yeah. to do farm to, um, farm to table produce. Or, oh, hey, we're going to make sure we're giving kids backpacks every year. Like It's, it's the community. It's mm -hmm. the people getting involved. Absolutely. Thank you so much for, for coming on the show, for sharing the story. We really appreciate it.